Hey there, welcome. My name is Albert, and today I'm going to show you how to install Comfy UI on your own hardware, meaning you get all that generative AI image creation and video creation goodness on your own machine for free with local hardware and nobody stopping you. So what is Comfy UI exactly? You probably know a little bit at least, or you wouldn't be watching this video, but the homepage comfy.org explains it perfectly. It is in fact the most powerful tool for generative AI, and it's open sourced. Let's go a little bit deeper though. Why would you want Comfy UI if you're already comfortable using other tools, maybe online tools like Midjourney or Freepik? Well, both the main advantage and disadvantage is it is node based. You get full control thanks to nodes. What are nodes exactly? Well, nodes are these little windows here. So in this image, you have, for example, a text prompt node. That's obvious. It's a little text box where you can enter your prompt. Now, that's connected to a K sampler node. I won't explain what a K sampler node is, but basically that's where you have all sorts of other settings to control your AI model that are not available on most online ways of using AI. You can set the amount of steps, which influences the quality, which enables you to maybe do like very rough previews of your generation before going whole hog and uh, giving it the full time and maybe not even giving you a result that you're looking for. Um, you can obviously preview your image generations. That's a node in itself. But the most powerful thing about nodes is that you can actually combine many different AI models with each other and make repeatable, shareable workflows that do exactly what you're looking for and nothing else. Um, for example, uh, a video that went viral on evolving AI that I helped create um, was actually made using a complicated Comfy UI workflow that to this day is still being used in professional productions that um, actually clients approach my team about. So being very, very good in Comfy UI actually puts you in a very small international group of AI artists that um, can find jobs, can build entire careers in AI-powered media creation just by knowing Comfy UI. Enough talk. How do we install this thing? What do we need to install this thing? You might think that once you're on comfy.org, you just need to go to products and then hit local Comfy UI and then download for your machine. While you can do that, it is not the way I would recommend it because if you download it this way, you will get exactly one installation of Comfy UI. And Comfy UI being software that is constantly being worked on in the open source space by thousands of different people, and being extremely customizable, so you can add all sorts of plugins and stuff you want, um, it's also very easy to break. And if you're currently working on one project and you install a new plugin and that installation breaks, it can actually be very hard to, um, to fix that. Another disadvantage of doing it this way is you might have other ways of using AI. If you've been uh, following this YouTube channel, I've shown you other interfaces like Auto 1111 or a Web UI Forge, which you can use to create images. And if you have them installed separately, it's not super easy to have them share resources. So you might have to have two copies of the same model on the same computer, and that's just a waste of your resources. So what do I recommend? I recommend doing the following. You go and install Stability Matrix. So Stability Matrix is a GitHub project, but don't click away yet. It's actually really easy to install. That lets you use many, many different UIs on the same computer accessing the same exact models from the same place. So you'll have one clean folder on your PC and um, Comfy UI will be accessing that. You can keep multiple installations of Comfy UI. So uh, if you for some reason need an older version of Comfy um, on one specific project and a newer one on a different project, absolutely no problem. You can have those in parallel. And of course, this is also for free. This is also an open source project. So no worries about that. How do you install that? Well, you can scroll up here to releases and click whatever is latest. Then scroll down a bit and download the version for the computer you have. I will be doing this on Windows and um, I can also only explain how to do this on Windows because that's what I use at work professionally. Our whole team is on Windows uh, on NVIDIA GPUs specifically. So I'm gonna be installing this on my home computer which is a 3070 card, perfectly fine for generating images. And um, you basically just need any decent gaming computer and you should be able to do this as long as you have NVIDIA. There are um, AMD card tutorials available. I'm not an expert in that, so I won't be talking about that, but there are guides available for that as well. So click Windows, it'll download a 132 megabyte file. And then once you have that, you just go to your downloads folder, 
right click on that, extract all. And I personally prefer just putting it in my main user folder. You put it wherever you feel comfortable. And then you'll see it where you installed it. It's just a simple file, double click on Stability Matrix. The first time you open this on your PC, you might get a warning like this. Because you installed it on GitHub, and GitHub, you know, there's all sorts of code out there. It's not checked. It's not from the Microsoft App Store or whatever. So perfectly fair to have this window pop up. Stability Matrix is used by thousands and thousands of people. We use it at work. I don't want to vouch for software that I didn't build, but it's safe enough for this purpose. Just, you know, know what you're doing. You should be fine. So you click more info, run anyway, and then it continues. The first thing you'll see when you open it the first time is this welcome screen. You can pick your data directory where you want to install all your application data. That's the folder I was talking about. I'm just going to have it right next to Stability Matrix. And I'm also going to make sure I check portable mode. Portable mode is very, very practical if you move computers or if you have one setup with specific models and you're building a project and you want copies of that exact setup on different artists' computers, or if you just want to share with a friend who's also into AI, you can just take that folder, give it to them, and they'll have the same setup. Really cool. Hit continue. Analytics. I'm going to hit share analytics. You don't have to. And then we're already in the different UIs. So here's a bunch of different options for UIs you can install. Uh, I've talked about Web UI Forge already on this channel. It's, uh, it's one of my favorite UIs if you just want to get started simply in generating images and don't want to fiddle around with nodes. But today we're going to be scrolling down and hitting Comfy UI. It's already installing in the background for you. It's that easy. Now, while we wait, we can also uh, pick some models we want to install. Uh, anime is obviously very popular in the AI um, uh, fan scene, specifically hobby scene, uh, as are furries. Personally, not my thing, so I'm going to check Epic Realism XL. That's a decent model to get started with. Then I hit download, and then we can basically just watch it installing automatically. If you follow along, you'll see that it's also downloading bigger files like Torch, 2.7 gigs, and the actual image models are usually a couple gigs as well, so this might take a while. Feel free to take a little bit of a coffee break. And here we go, Comfy UI has been installed. So here under Packages, you'll see all the different interfaces that you have installed. Um, currently, obviously, there's only Comfy UI. Uh, you can open the specific installation that you have in your Explorer if you want to add some custom nodes manually, all sorts of advanced stuff. You could also change the installation version, which is not that easy with other ways of installing Comfy UI. So if, if for some reason you need to go back a version or go forward a version, you can click on that and you'll have all sorts of previous versions in your dropdown. You can even change the version of Python uh, you're running it with. So all sorts of cool stuff like that. If there's an update available, this will turn into a green button. There are various launch options here. So um, you can change the port on which Comfy UI runs. Obviously, it's going to open in your browser. You can change the port that uh, it will access. Uh, all sorts of advanced features here. If you only want to use your CPU for some reason, you can click that. Uh, Sage Attention, that's an advanced feature as well that um, I use for the more intense video generation on the better graphics cards. I will actually hit auto launch. That's a very simple feature. It means when I've launched Comfy UI, all the stuff is loaded up. It will automatically open my browser and show me the Comfy UI interface. Very simple ease of use. I honestly believe this should be the default setting, but whatever. Hit that checkbox if it's not already checked. And here under extensions, this is interesting for all sorts of plugins you may or may not want to install. First, we're going to launch it the first time. Now, the first time you launch it, it might take a little bit more time than later. So this will open in your default browser, whatever you have set up, and you'll see this templates menu. Let's just click this away for now, because there is a default workflow that's simple enough to understand Comfy UI and uh, test it out. So for load checkpoint, there's this default one, v1.5 pruned, but we don't actually have that. We have Epic Realism, if you remember, we installed that earlier. So we change it to that, leave everything else at default, except for the size. So just a thing you need to know, SDXL is trained on 1024 by 1024, so 512 by 512 would result in weird looking images. 
and otherwise we just hit run and see if it's working. You'll see it loads the prompts real quick, then it goes through case sampler. First time you run a workflow with a fresh refresh of, of ComfyUI, it's going to load a little bit longer than usual. Then it decodes real quick. And boom, we have our first generation with a fresh ComfyUI installation. Nice. There we go. It's working. And it should work for you. Now, if it doesn't, don't fret. Uh, you can either comment below under this YouTube video or search it up online. There are so, so many communities out there that use ComfyUI professionally uh, around comfy.org. That's a whole company built to um, keep the open source project going. There's tons of resources here on the website, uh, a blog, a whole Discord. So don't fret. Almost every single problem I've had with ComfyUI, someone else has had, and I've been able to help myself and figure it out. And even some LLMs, now that ComfyUI has existed for a couple years, like Claude, are also able to help you troubleshoot with ComfyUI. Now that this is working and set up, I'm not going to go into the details of ComfyUI. This is an installation tutorial after all. But I would like to make you a little more familiar with Stability Matrix, the interface that we used to install and manage our ComfyUI installation. So we go back here and you see this is where it's running. This is the button to press if there's something going on in ComfyUI and you want to restart it, if you've, uh, for example, installed new plugins, that sort of thing. But on the left here, you'll see a couple other tabs. The second tab is something called Inference. This is actually pretty cool. It's sort of a built-in image generator with instability matrix. So you don't need to actually be running ComfyUI to test new models you may have just installed, that sort of thing. Just want to make you aware of that. It's a pretty neat little extra feature. The next one is the Checkpoint Manager, where you can see all the models that you have installed. Currently, we have only Epic Realism XL because that's the first thing I clicked. And then one tab further is the Model Browser. This is super cool because it connects directly to um, three of the most popular resources online for uh, finding and installing new so-called checkpoints or AI image models. And um, you can just scroll here. You can sort it by highest rated. Pony Diffusion is a very popular one, kind of an anime style one, also for furries. Um, but you can scroll down and find all sorts of things you like. The next tab is the Output Browser, also a super good feature. It's a visual representation of all the images that uh, you have saved. Of course, there's currently only one here, so you can click that and you can delete it. Um, obviously, you have all the classic selections, basically like an Explorer, except specifically for your Comfy UI generations. That's pretty obvious. And then last but not least is the Workflow Browser. And this is where you can install all sorts of different workflows that other people have built that you can try out in your own Comfy UI um, setup. Those are the basics. That is my favorite way to uh, keep ComfyUI updated, install models uh, to work across different interfaces, and um, keep things fresh, keep things working, so I can focus on my actual image and video creations. Uh, let me know if you want more ComfyUI uh, content. I know tons of it. I've spent years learning the software and building workflows in it, and um, I'm happy to help turn you into a ComfyUI Pro as well. And with that said, I hope you have fun using ComfyUI. Uh, subscribe to my Substack if you want kind of more thinky pieces about AI and where the media industry is going. Subscribe to this YouTube channel, like, comment. I'm Albert Bosazan, and um, I hope to see you soon. Thanks.